Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we're taking a look at the BMW Custom Installation Kit with base rails on a 2017 Ram 2500. The Custom Installation Kit works by using brackets underneath the truck, and when you drill the holes through, you're attaching it to these rails, which your fifth wheel sits in. Now this is going to apply to a bunch of different bases, so not just a BMW will work on this. In fact, there's quite a few brands that will work perfectly fine with this. So if you're looking for an option to drop your base into with some nice rails, this can be a great option for you. It also has a nice powder coat finish, so that's actually gonna keep up long term, looking really nice in your bed. The great thing too is when you're not using your fifth wheel, pulling this out, it really doesn't cause too much of an issue as far as having anything in your bed when you're loading it might get in the way a little bit but the fact that it's all flat means that you can store on top and it shouldn't get in the way the custom fit brackets are going to help with the installation as they are custom catered to your truck now this does require these holes to be drilled in order to attach to the bracket and there are a few spots on this truck that are kind of tricky to get to that hardware but i'm here to walk you through it and get this installed on your truck so let's take a look at the installation so to begin our installation, we're going to start by removing the spare tire and mostly because that's going to just gain us a lot more access when we're underneath the truck and allow us to have a little bit more room to work with. So we'll go ahead and get that lowered down and out of the way. So pretty quickly, you're gonna see in the instruction manual that there are some variances between the years of the Rams. So double check to make sure that you are doing the proper procedure for the year of your Ram. And they actually have a diagram in the instructions that's going to show you which one you're gonna use. And that's gonna be based on where the exhaust hanger is. So double check that, uh, just make sure that it is the proper orientation and that way you're not mounting it incorrectly. So with that, we're gonna grab our tape measure we're gonna hop in the bed and get some measurements. So next you're gonna to wanna to grab one of your rails and just kind of set it ahead. And what we're gonna be doing is measuring how far back and where it's actually gonna mount in the bed. So based on your bed length, that's gonna determine the actual measurement. And we're gonna be just using the instruction manuals. Uh, they have the distances in there. So I'm gonna measure out and find my mark on our six foot bed here. So seeing where our measurement puts us, I'm gonna just bump the rail and just be careful when you're measuring that you're doing it from the edge of the actual uh, bed, not the tailgate itself. And so I'm gonna scoot this forward to match my measurement. And you're gonna be measuring to the edge of the rail here. Now, once you have this distance, that's gonna be how far back it is. You're also gonna to wanna to measure side to side. You can see I have a little bit more of a gap here than that side, so once you have your length, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the width is also accurate. That way it's actually centered up. So go ahead and measure from your wheel well here to the side and find that center distance and center it up. Now using the ridges in the bed also kind of helps here just to kind of get a uh, quick reference and then you can kind of fine tune it with the tape measure from there. So I've gone through and I've double checked my measurements all across the board because once you mount this, it's pretty well set. So make sure that you take your time, have it right exactly where you need it to be. Uh, the instruction manuals are pretty good about the measurements being spot on. So if you get that right where you need it to be, the install is gonna go a lot smoother. So now, you can use a punch here to mark the holes that you're going to be drilling. Um, me personally, with a bed like this, it's obviously been used, so it's hard to see those punch marks sometimes. Uh, I'm going to just use a paint marker, and that way it's a nice visual. Um, I can actually see exactly where it's at when I move this rail out of the way. So as far as marking, there are specific spots for each vehicle. You can see this is kind of a universal rail, but on our Ram, the ones that we're going to be looking at are going to be our second hole in. So I'm going to make a little mark here and then you're going to do the one towards the cab but again the second hole in and then in our center section here you're going to want to mark the one that's closer to the cab here and then we're going to repeat the process like our driver's side and we're going to do the second one in here on the passenger 
So now that we have our holes marked, we can go ahead and get the rail out of the way. And you're gonna wanna grab a small drill bit to make some pilot holes. Now, before drilling the holes into the bed, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that underneath your clearances are gonna be okay. You're not gonna be puncturing anything because the fuel tank does sit under here. So looking at it though, I see that the tank actually has a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the bed and the actual tank itself. So as long as you're not using an extremely long drill bit, just kind of, you can make those pilot holes and it should be safe uh, and not puncture anything. But also to be careful, you have brake lines as well that are attached to these brackets. So again, this is something you're gonna wanna be careful to make sure that you're not damaging anything in the process while drilling those holes. Knowing that my clearances underneath are gonna be fine, I'm not gonna puncture anything, I'm gonna go ahead and run our pilot hole through the marks that we've made. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab your driver and passenger side brackets. I'm gonna do the passenger side here and we're basically just gonna kinda of put this in place to know that the holes are actually lined up um, before enlarging the holes. In the passenger side, so you're gonna see these tabs here. This is gonna sit against the actual frame rail. These should line up with our holes and this elongated portion should face towards the cab. So grab your passenger here, put that against the frame rail and as we slide it up, we can see our holes are within this uh, oval here on our actual bracket. So our passenger side is good. I'm gonna go ahead and double check my driver's side as well. Now this one is gonna get tricky just because of lack of space. The way that the rams are kind of laid out, generally the driver's side is always a little tricky to get to, but uh, grab your bracket and you should be able to see the holes up there and make sure that lines up as well. Now on the driver's side, it's gonna be a little bit trickier as I said, because it is tight, but also you have brake lines that are actually gonna be sitting up there. So putting the bracket in, um, those brake lines may have to move. I'm gonna to try to just mock it up for now. We will be moving those, um, but you're gonna be looking for the holes all the same. So just like we did on our passenger, I'm gonna feed this up here. And these are our little lines here that I was worried about. As long as I can get this to slide up over the rail, I should have enough clearance. Just be careful, you're not gonna wanna pull on these too hard. But, let's see. And it looks as if we're not really gonna have an option to get this lined up without moving some of this. So, let's go ahead and we'll go grab our tools to be able to move these. To gain access to these holes, we are gonna have to move these little brackets. You can also see this wire loom here. Um, now you do have hard lines that are attached. Those are probably not gonna be able to move, but getting these out of the way is gonna gain us that access. So they have uh, plastic clips that go into the frame rail here. So we're gonna kinda just use a uh, pry tool here and just kinda get behind those clips and pop them off. And that way we're gonna be able to actually kinda zip, zip tie these out of the way and gain us a lot more access. So you can see the plastic clip I'm kind of just holding this in, get behind that. I'm trying not to pry or put pressure on those lines. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but get a good angle here. And you should be able to twist this. And if these clips can break with a little bit of extra pressure, that's really not an issue here just because we are going to probably zip tie them up out of the way. Um, so we have our wire loom there. Next, I'm gonna try to get these clips popped out. So we have one, two, same thing. We got plastic clips, so we'll just kind of get behind that sensor there, or the uh, plug, and we'll pry that up. It's actually able to do that with my hands. Um, also, I'm gonna note, if, you, if your truck has some dust, dirt, and debris underneath it, Highly recommend safety glasses here because you're going to have a lot of stuff falling down. So as you can see, these have a little bit of movement now. So I've zip tied these just to kind of get them out of the way. This main wiring harness here, that's going to cause a lot of issue as it kind of binds up where you need to slide this in place. So uh, get all those clips off there so it's a little bit loose and you may have to work that over the bracket. But once you have it in place, you're going to see it should line up here. So let's push this against the frame rail 
and we can see our holes through the elongated portions so we are lined up so from there i'm going to go up in our bed with a step bit and we're going to enlarge those holes so now with the step bit, I'm gonna enlarge these holes now that we know that they're lined up and we're gonna make them 9 16 And what I've actually done is I brought one of the carriage bolts and this is what's gonna feed in there. And that way when I drill it out, I know that it's actually gonna feed in. But if you do 9 16 should be good. So let's go ahead and we'll enlarge these holes. Once the holes are enlarged, I'm gonna go back with just a file here and kind of hit these edges just to kind of take some of those burrs down uh, and make it smooth enough to where that bolt's gonna feed in no problem. Once you do that, I'm gonna vacuum up these shavings, kind of clean this area up a little bit, and then I'm actually gonna put a little bit of clear coat spray paint just to kind of protect that raw metal and keep it from rusting or corroding long term. So I'm just going to be using a little bit of clear enamel here. Uh, if you have a bed liner or a black truck or whatever, you can use whatever spray paint that you have available. Main thing is you're just coating that raw paint surface. So now we're going to take our rail here and line it up with the holes that we've drilled. And then I have five carriage bolts here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of feed these through and also I have my U spacer bolts here, or spacer blocks. And so what I'll do is take one of these. So I'm gonna take my spacer block here. And this is actually gonna sit in kind of, you'll see it really can't sit this way because of the way that the bed rails actually are here. Uh, you know, the corrugations are gonna throw that off. So being able to adjust it to make sure that it's sitting flush on the bed rail is going to make sure that it's going to stay in place there and then feed that through and go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing on the other five hole, four holes. So now underneath on the frame rails you can see where our brackets are actually going to sit. This is that elongated portion. Uh, there are two weld nuts in the frame and we're gonna be using those to actually attach those brackets. Now, I'm gonna just put our little tube brush in here real quick and show you like there's quite a bit of dust and dirt and debris that is gonna cause those threads to be tricky to get those bolts in. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of penetrating oil. If you have spray silicone or a lubricant of some sort to clean this out, go ahead, spray that down. And then this tube brush works really well. If you don't have a tube brush, we actually have these here at E-Trailer and they're really nice for kind of getting all those threads clean and you can really kind of scrub at it. So work these clean. Um, I suggest also taking the hardware and running it through just kind of by hand first uh, to make sure that it is gonna thread. That way you don't have your bracket in place and you're trying to feed something that's not gonna wanna go in those threads. So get these nice and clean. There's also two on the driver's side. So go ahead and make sure those are cleaned out as well. Next, I'm gonna be getting our brackets in place and I'm gonna be doing the passenger side first. And what we're gonna need is our longer hex bolt here. We're then gonna put a split washer and then you're gonna have a half inch washer. Now, the instruction manual said that these were included. I did not find them. It's very possible that they might be missing out of your kit. So if that's the case, local hardware store should have half inch washers here, um, but you're gonna want that to compress that split washer here. We also have two of our rectangular blocks with the circular hole. And so this longer one is actually gonna go in the forwardmost hole. So let's hop under there and I'll show you. So I'll just kind of slide our carriage bolts through our elongated holes here on the bracket. Make sure that those are gonna be fitting okay. And I push mine up there, but we're gonna see that we have that uh, threaded weld nut in the frame rail that we put or that we cleaned out. So what we're going to do here is take this portion and then we have our blocks and the blocks are just a spacer here um, because the frame does kind of have a curvature that goes in. So what we'll do here is take my bolt, run it through. Feed this up, 
we're gonna find that weld nut and get that hand tightened in place. Now, through a lot of this, we're gonna wait to tighten everything down completely. Uh, that way we still have a little bit of tolerance to move around, uh, just to kind of get everything lined up. So hand tight normally should be fine for now. Uh, let's find that weld nut. There we are. And I kind of got some threads started there. So now we're going to take our shorter bolt that we have in our hardware, and we're gonna place our split washer there with our flat washer. And that's gonna just go in the next weld nut here that we cleaned. So you can thread that in as well. So now that we have our two bolts in place and our weld nuts, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the driver's side. So now we're gonna take our spacer block and we're gonna thread that up on that stud and we're gonna follow it up with our flared nut and we're gonna go ahead and also repeat that on the remainder of the studs that are down. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab your rear rail and basically we're gonna kinda of set it back and we're gonna to need to put our actual uh, fifth wheel here actually in the front and this is where we're gonna get our distance for our rear rail. And so drop that in the front and uh, you'll see, there's still gonna be a little bit of wiggle room because those are loose. That's okay. We don't want those tightened down yet because we are gonna find that sweet spot for this. So once you have that front in, just kind of pull back to make sure that it's kind of uh, sitting against that. And then I'm gonna just lift up and get our rear rail, rear rail in place. We're gonna to try to get that to drop in as well. So just like that. Uh, actually, there we go. So once you have that aligned, again, pull back on the rail. That way it's gonna be a nice tight fit and it's also gonna square this up a little bit more. So you can see that it's pretty square to our front one as it should be. But I'm also gonna take my measurements and just make sure that all of my marks are proper and then I'm gonna grab my paint pen and we'll start marking where we're gonna drill pilot holes. So just as we did before on the front, we're gonna to need to make some marks of where we're gonna drill. So to really get this set perfectly, push forward on the actual base here and pull this back. And that's gonna make sure that it's seated all the way where it needs to be. And again, you're gonna to wanna to check your widths here and everything should kind of line up to where it's nice and squared. Um, I'm gonna take my tape measure and check real quick, but important here, we're gonna be marking different holes than we did up front. So it does change a little bit. Instead of using the second, we're gonna use the furthest inward holes on both sides, and then we're actually gonna use the back hole here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna measure this out, and then I'm gonna make my marks. So now that we have those marked, we can actually lift this base out of the way, get the rail out, and then we're gonna drill our pilot holes just like we did on the front rail. Now the back holes are gonna be no problem. These front ones, we're gonna be drilling through the bed, but also there's gonna be the cross member underneath that. So you may need a longer drill bit to be able to get through there. Um, but first I'm gonna just go ahead and get all my pilot holes and then I'll show you kind of what I do here. Now the rear holes, we're gonna be able to enlarge those just the same size as we did up front and that should be no problem. But the front, since it passes through the cross member, it's gonna be a little bit tricky and you're gonna probably need a long drill bit. Now, you can technically use a step bit underneath to enlarge the hole, but I'm gonna show you what kind of what we're doing here and why. So this needs to be large enough for this long bolt to pass through, not only the bed, but the cross member. We're then gonna enlarge the hole to put this 
uh, sleeve here and that's going to kind of sit in there and just kind of hold that bolt in place. But we do need to make sure that this passes through the actual cross member so we can attach this and create a secure mounting point. So it's very, very important on this step that you're drilling perpendicular to the bed to make sure that you have a straight shot for this bolt to go through. So I'm going to go ahead and start drilling on those. So you can see I've made it through my bed and now it kind of hits that cross member. So continue on making sure that you're perpendicular and drill through. Now we're gonna take our step bit. We'll get these bottom three to 9 16th. So now our forward holes, I'm gonna take a larger step bit and these need to be seven eighths and that's gonna allow our sleeve here to slide in. So I'm gonna have this handy, that way I can test fit it in. Um, now we're not drilling all the way through the cross member on this, it's simply gonna be on the bed. So let's go ahead and enlarge this hole. We'll keep going. and that should be good. Now before actually putting this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and file this down and paint it just like we did the previous holes. Once that paint is dry, we'll be able to drop our sleeves in place. Now you might wanna grab your carriage bolt here, just to kinda of make sure that it aligns. And really what I'm doing here is just making sure that through the bottom of the cross member, I can see that this is actually passed through. We may end up having to drill this out just a little bit just to make sure that we have this carriage bolt feeding directly through. That way we can actually attach it. So now we're going to go ahead and put our tube spacer here on the other side. And then we can actually get our rail in place. So go ahead and lift this up, center it up on the holes that we just drilled. Everything's looking good there. So now we can pass our long carriage bolts through these tubes, making sure that it drops down through the cross member. You may have to kind of play around with it. If your holes are straight, hopefully that will help a little bit. There we go. Go ahead and do the same on the other side. And then you have your three carriage bolts. Those are gonna go here. Now you're gonna to wanna to take those U spacers just like we did before, and we're gonna go ahead and put these in place. And what these are gonna do, this is simply gonna just create a nice little spacer between the actual bed rails and the rail itself. And that way it's going to make sure that it's not gonna crush it down. It's gonna give it that support that it needs. Now these ones are obviously gonna be a little bit trickier and you're not really gonna have to worry about those because we do have that tube spacer in there and really the way that this bed rail is, there's really not a whole lot that it's going to be doing here. So we're gonna omit these. So now to gain us a little bit more room to work with and to be able to mount up our brackets, I'm gonna go ahead and remove our heat shield. It's just gonna be some 10 millimeter uh, bolts and there's some here that go on the cross member or this cross frame as well. So let's go ahead and take those out and then we'll take our heat shield out and we'll be able to see a lot more. So now we're gonna be putting our rear brackets on and I have our driver side one here and you're gonna see it's stepped to actually have those carriage bolts pass through. And then we're gonna have our hardware uh, to go into these weld nuts here. But just like before, this one is kind of coated up as you can see. So I'm gonna go through and clean those holes out and then we'll get this mounted up. So we're gonna see, we're kind of having the same issue as we had on our front rail. This wiring harness here, 
I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off and that way we can kind of move it out of the way. There's gonna be two of them that I'm gonna remove because this plate is gonna sit against the frame rail. That's gonna make sure that it's gonna sit actually flush against it by moving this. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop these off, and then we'll get our bracket in place. Still causing a little bit of issue. And the problem is this wire is actually, you know, it's pretty tight. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room here. So you may have to play around with this a little bit. You might have to push the stud up just a hair just to kind of get it in place. But it should end up having your carriage bolts pass through. And it should align these holes, the weld nuts in the frame pretty easily. So once we have that all lined up, We'll go ahead and we're going to hand tighten these in. So now we have our passenger side and it's going to be a little bit different in the fact that this bracket doesn't actually run up to that front one that we ran through the cross member. So it should be pretty easy to just get this here, run our carriage bolt through the top and then hand thread these in. So now what we're going to be doing is taking our rectangle spacers here and our flange nuts and they're going to go on the carriage bolts that we passed up through the top. Now these two are on the bracket and we have our center one and this one's going to be easy. Now this one's going to get a little bit tricky but I think uh, and the stud is kind of just hanging here so it might take a little bit of practice to kind of get this in place and be able to tighten it up um, but with a little bit of patience we'll have all these installed. Now it's also gonna help too, while threading these on, if you can pull them down, and that way you can make sure that that square of the carriage bolt is actually seated up there. That way when you do go to tighten this down, it's gonna make it a lot easier than it's spinning up top. So you might have noticed that this bolt that went through there is going to be tricky. And the reason being is you have that flange nut that's kind of pressing against this here. So the way that we were able to get this tightened is you do have a little bit of room here, enough to get your finger passed through it. And so I actually raised up the carriage bolt and I tightened it here while having someone up top with a wrench. And then once it actually seated enough to drop into the carriage bolt, sp carriage bolt spot up top, I was able to actually tighten it down from there. So it is tricky, take your time, and maybe with an extra set of hands, you should be able to get that tightened down. And that's gonna be the last of the hardware. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna to torque it all down with a torque wrench. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we have these here at E-Trailer, or generally you can rent them at an auto parts store, but this ensures that the studs are not gonna to be too tight or too loose uh, over a long period of time of using it. So we're gonna first start with all of our carriage bolts and we're gonna tighten those down. Now, these are gonna be a specific torque rating and these are also gonna be a different one. So make sure that you refer to your uh, instruction manual to make sure that you have the proper torque settings. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knock out all my carriage bolt ones. Now, some of these are going to be pretty tricky to get to. Um, so you may end up needing to use a swivel or an extension to get to some of them, but take your time, make sure that they're all properly torqued out. And once you have all your hardware torqued down to the proper settings, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, get your heat shield back on and raise up your spare tire. So now you're ready to drop in your base and get to towing. And that was a look at the B&W custom insulation kit base rails for your fifth wheel on a 2017 Ram 2500.